In the previous video, I mentioned my cousin who lives in Montana. He has since passed away. This video is dedicated to you. Anthony Gonzalez. I love and miss you. Day 7, 24 June, 2016, Part 2. Grazing on that dark green grass are the missiles of the road. Deer. I have been clenching the handlebars on the bike, but just now, I find I have a second level of grip. The tension felt from riding a slick road shatters away to stealing every nerve I have. The obnoxiously loud rumble of my friend's bike pairs with mine. This wafting thunder causes an obvious look of panic on their now raised heads. Three of the deer take a startled leap in our direction. I tense to receive the rush of living meat. No way to avoid them if they continue their panicked run our way. They take a stutter step. Then, with a pivot, they turned and bound majestically into the woods on their side of the road, leaving us unscathed. I call their bounding majestic because they did not run out in front of me. For those who have hit a deer or any wild animal while riding, other foul, more heinous words are attributed to them, and rightly so. Wild animals of any size are dangerous and most deadly in some cases. The light of the day is fading with infinite possibilities of more wildlife encounters. I am done with this day that is quickly turning to night. Lolo Pass is coming up. I stop at the first gas station I see. I have been daydreaming of coffee, hot chocolate, or anything warm really for hours now. No luck, the station is closed. I stand outside this gas station, hands on the glass. For the first time in my life, I stand outside an establishment like this, yearning to be inside. Even if I had to stand in the standard poorly scrubbed restroom to drink that coffee, I would. My desperation is just that great. Disappointed and dejected, we saddle up and push on to Missoula. Desperate for an end, or at least a break from the chill that is past the bone, settling into our core. At this point, I would crawl into the Tauntaun with Luke. Anything for warmth. The light is now gone, and no signage announcing the town we are riding for is presenting itself. The rain is coming down in ever-growing heavier sheets. The road widens to four lanes, giving us hope, but the rain is not letting up. City lights are glowing over the top of the hills and rises that make up the outskirts of town. The wet and chill is numbing my wits. I don't care if it is a cup of coffee brewed through an old sock. I need warmth. Missoula reveals itself at last. The first place I see that is still open, I swing into. It is a pizza hut. I don't bother to remove any of my gear. Normally, as soon as the bike has stopped, I remove my helmet and gloves, quickly followed by my riding glasses. That is not the case tonight. I walk into the Pizza Hut like a leather-clad Terminator. That is, if the Terminator could have creaky, cold joints. The waiter tells us, you can sit anywhere you like. I begin peeling layers of clothing, wanting to feel the warm air trapped in this heavenly, toasty place. The waiter says, what can I get you to drink? I say, I want coffee, way too fast. He says, I'm sorry, I just poured the last of it out. I start to cry, a grown man with tears in his eyes. Can you imagine crying over old coffee? It must have hit the man in the fields because he says, I can make some more. In the most comforting way imaginable, he then says, we have soup. Did my ears deceive me, soup? The waiter says, yes, we have cheese and broccoli, potato and lobster bisque. I am not a soup person. Never have been, yet the thought of another hot liquid was like music on a summer field. My thoughts dance in my head like a child with the giggles. I choose cheddar broccoli because it was the first option, anything to get it to the table sooner. Them ordering is a blur of annoying sounds that prevents the quick arrival of this blessed gift of warmth. The soup comes out quickly and we dive in, making appreciative sounds like this is the best soup in the world. At that point, you could not have convinced me otherwise. The addition of the coffee makes a unique pairing. It would not be considered in the finest restaurants, but I can promise you that I would not have traded this course at this time for any five-star meal. It is perfect. We order pizza as well, having been without food the entire day's ride. Breakfast was a distant memory numbed out by the chill and miles of the highway. I pack in all the hot food and drink I can. Only then does the afterthought of lodging creep into our chill addled brains. Calls and searches reveal a lot of book solid hotels. Everything close to our little oasis of warmth is unavailable. I make up my mind that if nothing is available, I will lie in a booth in this pizza hut for the night, probably followed by a trip to the jail. 
but that is a fight I am willing to have. I am spent. My thoughts are, police cars are warm and so are jails. The Hampton Inn across town has two rooms left. The problem is that they are suites, if you can call that a problem. I don't care about the price as long as I can get a hot shower and bed down for the night. Our ride across town is like children released from summer break. We rev our motors and laugh from the full bellies and in lucking into a room for the night. The ladies get off the bikes and go check us in. We are told we can park our bikes right up front, out of the rain. It is coming down harder now. Fortunately for us, the skies waited until we have parked to really pour. In the hotel lobby are two ladies. Based on their gaiety, I would wager that they are both on their fifth bottle of wine. Done with the ripped wet weather bottoms, I pull them off and throw them in the trash can out front. Doing this causes the automatic doors to open. I hear one of them yell, he's taking his clothes off, woo! Followed quickly by the other one saying, there you go, take it off, woo! Both ladies then devolving into hysterical laughter like two hyenas on the Serengeti. Next, my friend steps into the lobby, or firing line as it were. He is wearing his full face helmet in all his leather. When he walks into the lobby, one of the ladies yells, It's Iron Man! Again, they both erupt into deep fits of belly laughter. I get my Harley bag and walk in after him, taking one last look at the bike. The doors open and I hear, Ooh, it's thunder! Iron Man and thunder! Again, laughing in great fits of laughter. One said, I thought you were going to ride right into the lobby. The other one, without missing a beat, says, Ooh, that would be awesome! Do that! Ride in here, Iron Man! I turn to the manager of the hotel and say, how long have they been at it? He says, since about five, when their kids were done with the softball game they had today. I ask him, how many bottles have they had? He says, from what I've seen, that is the third. I walk to my room and get ready for a hot shower. My wife asks if I will go get a bottle of water from the lobby. Yes, dear, is my less than enthusiastic reply. Key and money in hand, I go out on my assignment. It just so happens my friend is sent on the same errand that I am. We get the water out of the cooler and are once again pounced on by the lobby cougars. Hey, wow, you look shorter without the suit, Iron Man, says one, followed by, Are you two going to go swimming? Both of them throwing out their best lines. I say, We didn't bring a swimsuit. One says, You could just swim in your underwear. My friend says, That sounds great. We will meet you there. We pay for our water and make a quick exit before they can truly pounce and drag us off to their cave to devour. I cannot say that I have ever been sexually harassed, but two horny drunk ladies in a Missoula hotel lobby gave the best effort I have yet to experience. It was a great attempt, I have to admit. I felt completely undressed and desired. After a warm shower and a few minutes under the blankets, I am out. Good night, Missoula. Fade to black. That is the end of day seven. Until next time, my name is James Parker, and I am a Savage Rider. Savage Rider, out. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked what you saw, consider giving it a like and sharing it with your friends. If you would like to be notified of future releases, consider subscribing to my channel. If you think it was cringe and absolutely ridiculous, go ahead and tell me in the comments below, then share it with your friends. They may need a dose of cringe silliness today. Either way, thank you and God bless.